Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. Um, so yeah, I'm going to just give a little bit more um, detail in terms of the scorecard itself and just run through a, a brief, uh, keep to my time, um, summary of the results of the early pilot. Um, and then I'm going to hand over to, um, as Cassandra said, some of our um, early experiences with the pilot. So just to introduce everyone now to, to save some time. So first, um, after I've presented, we'll move to Kamau Getweche from Kenya, from BD. Um, and then we'll hear from um, the three countries in which we've um, been doing this initial pilot. So first of all, we'll hear from Amete Miret from EPHI in Ethiopia. Uh, then we'll move on to uh, Peter Kinyanjui from Kenya. And then finally, we'll hear from uh, Professor Patrick Njuken from Cameroon from GHSS. So I'll just start by um, giving a bit of an overview. So firstly, as Cassandra already said, this is really um, looking at building on what we already have with the Slipter approach, SLAMTA, and also some other tools, but trying to make that, customize that for AMR. So the structure um, of the tool, we have paper-based uh, checklists, but I think critically these days we want to look to e-tools, both for simplifying the assessment, but also for being able to collate the data either ac across a country from uh, numerous facilities, but also on a regional level. So we have an electronic score scorecard which brings the different elements together and allows us to do a, um, a very rapid automated analysis. So the different for the, um, for the scorecard um, currently, we're focusing really on, on three technical areas. The first one being um, uh, blood samples, so culture, detection, ID, and um, susceptibility testing from blood samples. Secondly, from urine samples, and then lastly, from fecal samples. So those are the three sort of focus areas um, we have in the scorecard. Obviously, this could be expanded at a later stage. Um, we have a couple of different sections, so it's a very standardized um, structure. So anyone that's familiar with SLIPTA will see the same um, structure that SLIPTA follows in terms of the different elements we look at. So we have a section of general lab information, and then we have a couple of technical sections. The first one is really covering any requirements that we feel are not fully fleshed out in terms of the requirements specific for AMR. Um, within SLIPTA, so we sort of flesh those out a bit in terms of what's required generally. And then we have some specific sections for the blood, the urine, and the fecal samples that really hone into the technical details and what's needed for each of those areas. And then this is obviously accompanied by a user guide. And then lastly, just to mention a little bit, we won't speak too much about it today, but we're looking also on how do we, how do we really build this out beyond the lab and ensure that the um, the laboratory clinical interface that we've heard a lot about um, already this um, conference, that we really make sure that these results are being um, used in, in the right way and influencing patient care. So we have a separate checklist which is really still in the draft stage, but again, from these early experiences with the pilot, we're starting to understand maybe how that could be used, and, and again, that's something we'd, we'd love to seek your feedback on as well. So this is really, I don't know how well you can see it up there, just to sort of give a, a sense of what the, um, what the e-tool looks like. So you'll see on the right there, it, it gives us a, a nice straightforward summary, both for the SLIPTA component, but also for the different technical components. So the, the SLIPTA um, uh, checklist that we have in the e-tool, it's exactly as per the original SLIPTA, so there's no changes whatsoever. And then the three um, technical sections are very much aligned to the same structure as SLIPTA. Um, the, the scoring will be different, um, but you'll see from the next couple of slides that the, what we see is really an, an alignment of um, the scoring across the different elements. So I'm afraid this may not be too good, but I can just take you through some of the very high level points. So first, just to say that um, each of the three countries um, selected a range of different laboratories that, that they wanted to look at during the pilot assessment to really get a feel for how good was the scorecard. Would it be useful only at a certain level or could we use this across the different levels? So we have everything from the district level facility all the way up to the national level that were included. Um, and again, in terms of the methods that we used, we see a range of um, many of the laboratories using um, manual culture methods, conventional ID and AST only. Um, up to some that were using automated blood culture, um, some even using some in-house molecular methods um, as well. 
So quite a range of, um, of methods being used. And again, I, hopefully that's quite representative of what we'd expect to see um, across other settings as well. Um, in terms of the scores and what we saw, so um, quite, I think as we would expect, there was quite a variation. So um, some of the labs scoring on the Slipter component, uh, zero stars with a low of 11%, all the way up to three stars and uh, a high of 81%, and sort of everything in between. So I think as we, as we might expect with this kind of array of facilities. And again, as I mentioned, for the different technical components, we actually saw that those scores were fairly well aligned in terms of if you had a, a high score with Slipta, you tended to, in general, to have a high score in the three areas. But I think what um, this, the AMR lab quality scorecard allowed us to do was really to hone in some of the technical areas that, that were re relative to AMR. So just very rapidly, because I see my time is, is running short. So what the teams found was um, basically the lab procedures were, being, were appropriate and were being generally performed well. But across the board, they did see um, a lack of standardization. So many of the SOPs were lacking a lot of the necessary detail, for example, sample rejection, um, pathogen identification, and particularly sort of how to deal with unexpected results or recognizing contamination, that kind of thing. Um, there were widespread gaps in terms of the quality control that was being done, um, quality assurance, and a lack of equipment maintenance. Um, so that was seen um, fairly consistently across the different labs that were assessed. Um, there were also, um, I think, very critically important gaps in terms of data collection and analysis and monitoring of quality indicators in the lab. So this means that this kind of information is really lacking for both for decision making within the lab, um, but also sort of possibility for quality improvement and really understanding um, the services that are being done in the lab. And I think very much related to that, um, the teams also found that um, the data on the pathogens being isolated, the AST patterns, et cetera, that were also not really being routinely collated and reporting to clinicians, so enabling that to be used to inform the local treatment guidelines. So that was really absent. Um, and interestingly enough, I think that um, in most of the facilities that were a part of the assessment uh, pilot, um, the team spoke to the infection control committees at the facilities and found that the lab were generally um, represented on those committees. But it seemed that they had a very passive role. So they weren't, as I mentioned before, they weren't collating the kind of lab data that would really be valuable for those committees and were really sort of attending but not really having an active um, role. It also seemed, in some cases at least, that the, the role of the ICC itself wasn't always so clearly defined, and so there wasn't really a sense of what the lab could offer. Um, but it seemed from the people that were interviewed in some of the facilities that they did seem to actually welcome a greater role of the lab. So I think that was, we saw that as being very encouraging. So just very quickly, I think just to see um, at the bottom there, you can see some of the common non-conformities. So as I mentioned, these were around um, a lack of quality control, um, specific issues on the blood culture in terms of those who had automated blood culture instruments. The software was generally not updated. Um, the instruments hadn't been verified, and there were various gaps in some of the procedures that were being done. But I think what you can see there is if you look at the, at the very top is the slip to scores, and if you look at the individual technical scores, in general terms, they tend to, um, tend to match. So lessons learned. Um, what, what we found during this initial pilot is that um, the scorecard really had an added value to the, the slip tour on its own by having this very specific technical focus on AMR. Um, the teams found it complemented the slip tour very well. Um, and it was quite flexible in terms of the way you could use it. So, we were using the e-tool and really wanting to find out how did SLIPTA and the, the technical scorecards um, fit together. So in most of the facilities, both were done together. But the, the various teams did it different ways. So some did the SLIPTA component first and then went on to the AMR and some the other way around. So they did find that you could use it quite flexibly. And particularly for internal audits, um, we felt that the, just the AMR component could be, could be done on its own and then maybe at, at, at certain sort of less frequent um, occasions you could do a combination. 
So that was sort of the lessons learned from there. And I think uh, Cassandra mentioned um, the acknowledgement. So just to thank everyone that's been involved so far in development and the, the piloting. Um, and particularly, I'd just like to call out just in, in my team, Andre Trollope, who should really be here presenting because he's been really the lead at FIND. Um, but then also um, from all the, the country partners from Africa CDC um, and BD who've been working together on this initial phase. And we're very excited to hear your, your feedback and, and next steps for this. Thank you.